This tiny painted panel, measuring fewer than nine inches wide, contains one of Rembrandt's most creative representations of the divine, a glowing figure whose body appears to dematerialize into light before our eyes, transforming from mortal flesh into the immaterial presence of the otherworldly. On public view for the first time in more than 10 years, this extraordinary painting is Rembrandt's Abraham Entertaining the Angels of 1646, generously lent to the Frick from a private collection. The work depicts the foretelling of the birth of Isaac, as recounted in chapter 18 of the book of Genesis. In the biblical episode, three divine beings in the guise of travelers visit the elderly couple Abraham and Sarah. Abraham invites these strangers to rest and have a meal, and offers them water so that they may wash their tired feet. While eating, one of the visitors announces that Sarah will give birth to a child in a year's time. Listening from the doorway, the old woman laughs in disbelief, until it is revealed that her guests are messengers of the Lord, or, according to some interpretations, God himself accompanied by two angels. In Rembrandt's depiction of the scene, this revelation is not an instantaneous one. Rather, it unfolds gradually, as conveyed by Rembrandt's portrayal of the three visitors and by his treatment of light. The angel with his back to the viewer largely retains the appearance of a traveler, with his walking stick laid beside him and a dirty foot extending from beneath his robe. His wings are folded behind his back, visible to us but not to Abraham or Sarah. He sits in shadow, and light only grazes his forehead and cheek. To his left, a second angel raises his wings and receives more light. His hand and chest glow brightly. Yet he eats, indicating that he too has not shed his earthly body. Finally, the figure at center spreads his wings and turns into light no longer flesh and blood, but entirely divine. Softly blended strokes of white inflected with gray and yellow create the effect of light pulsing beneath his robe, seeping into the tablecloth and casting glinting reflections on the dish on the table. This light spreads across the scene, but only begins to reach Abraham, shedding the faintest glow on his right arm and knee, while Sarah remains completely in shadow. Neither of them shows much of a reaction, as if they do not yet grasp what is unfolding before them. Suspended between darkness and light, they experience a delay in comprehension, a lapse between seeing and understanding. This represents a significant departure from Rembrandt's earlier work, in which divine encounters yield immediate reactions. Figures startle and flail, and their facial expressions register great shifts in emotion. In this painting of 1635, which depicts another episode from the story of Abraham, Rembrandt shows the elderly man responding to the sight of the angel, instantly dropping the knife that is captured in mid-air. In the 1646 painting, all such sudden motion has vanished. Everything is still and calm. Nothing falls or spills. Abraham is in full control of the bowl in his hand. He simply pauses, his thumb poised on the open lid of the pitcher, as he slowly takes in what is occurring before him. Here, time is not frozen, but seems to progress even as we look at the image. This is a new approach to pictorial narrative, and it relates directly to Rembrandt's developing interest in the workings of the mind. In this painting, he shows us the quiet, still moments between sensory perception and cognition. At the Frick, this painting is displayed with nine other works, prints, drawings, and a single copper plate depicting various episodes from the Abraham narrative. Scenes of familial drama laden with emotion and other encounters with the divine, through which Rembrandt examined the way mortals perceive and process the miraculous. Divine Encounter, Rembrandt's Abraham and the Angels, is on view in the Cabinet Gallery through August 20th, 2017. For more information, visit frick.org.
Major funding for the exhibition is provided by the Isabel and Alfred Bader Fund, a Bader Philanthropy, the David Berg Foundation, and the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation. Additional support is generously provided by Otto Nauman Limited, the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, and the Netherland America Foundation. Mm -hmm.